I wrestled a lot this week with the, with the Sherry with you this morning. And I went, Nancy can tell you, I went back and forth and up and down and all over the place. And I, until suddenly, <coughs> on Saturday, things began to come together. <coughs> Boom! You know. God is saying, what are you doing? You're doing all that. Why don't you just check with me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When all else fails, check with God. <laughs> um, this isn't what sparked it, but I got an offer from Dish TV. Hey. You want to give me a $300 prepaid card oh, yeah. if I switch over to their, their TV service? And the one line in here really got me. It said, two-year TV price guarantee. Listen, complete peace of mind. <laughs> with the same low price for two years. That's what's been bothering me all this time. My TV bill. That's right. And so now I can know that it's never going to change and have complete peace of mind. <laughs> Thank you very much. But isn't that something the way the, the commercials say, this will change your life. Every product you hear about, it will change your life. Or this will give you peace of mind. Or this will make you feel good about yourself again. And all that stuff. Okay, the times we live in now, and the circumstances that a lot of you are facing in your lives, can really drag us down. Can really try to, put a, try to put a weight on us. And try to just drag us down. And uh, so we need reminders often about who we are in Christ and who He is in us. Amen. And when the Holy Spirit comes to live in us when we're born again, He provides a new way of thinking. He provides a new life for us, a new way of living. It's all new. We are a new creation. It's not, not, a, not a refurbished one. Remember that? It's not, we're not refurbished. Amen. We're made new. We're not fixed up. We're replaced with a new spirit and a new nature. Galatians 5, verse 22. We talked about the fruit of the Spirit recently. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering or patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. If we live in the Spirit, let us, if we live in the Spirit, let us show it by our lifestyle, by our words, by our attitudes. Let it come out of us. Remember, church, we have the Spirit. We have this. We don't have to ask the Holy Spirit to come. We have Him. And we have the fruit of the Spirit already in us. It's already there. It begins to develop the moment we're born again. The Holy Spirit brings that fruit. And the, it, it produces that fruit in our lives. The Bible says we are complete in Christ. That we are lacking nothing that we have every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. But the fruit, when it begins, it's not mature. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's like a little hard rock, like, a, like an orange is when it starts on the tree. You know, it's just a little tiny thing. And it starts out that way in us. It has to be matured. It has to grow. It has to develop to, to produce all of its potential. We've been studying, I used, this is the same orange I had last week. <laughs> I attempted to eat it, but I didn't. There's only, how many fruit of the Spirit are there? One. One. There's one fruit of the Spirit. And it has many attributes. It has love, joy, peace, etc. Doesn't matter. Love, we talked about, is the skin of the fruit. It's the thing that holds the entire fruit together. Love is the same as the skin of this orange. Holds it all together. And it is the eternal, unconditional, intense love of God that holds the fruit in our lives together and causes it to mature and grow and get larger. Now all the parts in that fruit 
are connected with each other and they relate to each other. I'm beginning to see that a little more clearly. And when we talked about last week, when we really grasp the fullness of God's love for us, it produces joy. That's the fruit, first attribute of the fruit that is mentioned. Love, joy. And joy, of course, we talked about is our, is our confidence in the presence of God in our lives. The fact that I know He's there, I know He's got me, He's not going to let go, that gives me joy. That gives me that confidence that I need. I know His love will never let me go. And I can't be affected by anything that that love for Him can't be affected by anything I ever do, anything I ever say, or anything that ever happens to me. That love is solid. And that's what holds us, holds that together. And then when we experience that joy, something else happens. The next attribute of the fruit of the Spirit is peace. That becomes stronger in our lives the more we recognize His love and the joy that that brings, and then it brings peace. Uh, in Romans 8, 1, it says, There is now no what? Condemnation. No condemnation. No condemnation for those who are in Christ. So that means we have peace with God. He's never going to condemn us. Amen. We have salvation, we have acceptance, we have security, we have wholeness, we have significance. We have peace with God. In John 14, 27, Jesus said, My peace I give to you. Jesus said, Now we can have peace, the peace of God in us. My peace, Jesus said, I give to you. And not only is it uh, uh, from Him, it is a gift from Him. It is His peace. So we have peace with God. We have the peace of God, and we have peace from God. It's His, God, His peace. Jew and Gentile, no separation, no favoritism, no racism with God. If we want to talk about peace, uh, when Nancy and I were able to pay off all of our debt, we had financial peace, right? Nothing hanging over our heads except the monthly bills, of course. But... No, no, no car payments, no house payments, and all that stuff. That's peace. With God, we owe Him nothing. Once we're born again, we owe, owe, owe God anything. He canceled all of our debt. Amen. We're free and clear. When we're secure in our eternal future, I know where I'm going <clears throat> when I die. I know where I'm going. That gives me peace of mind. I'm not worried about it. I'm not concerned about it. I don't know what it's like to die. I don't know what heaven is like in all of its fullness. But I'm not afraid of it anymore. I've got peace. The knowing that God will never leave us, that gives us peace. I can be settled. Ah, he's not, I don't have to look around one day and where'd he go? No, he's always there. When we watch the foolishness in our government, we can look at it without fear and without anger because I have the peace of God. I know which kingdom I'm part of. And the kingdom I happen to live in right now is not my eternal kingdom. And I have peace in that kingdom. If, we, if, if economic collapse uh, threatens us, my God should supply all my need according to His riches and glory. I, don't, I can have peace about it. My enemies come against me. I can have peace. He's the one who will defend me. Uh, the, the world, the flesh, and the devil. I have no fear of those things anymore. No fear of those things. I can face injury and sickness and disease without fear. I remember, I remember sitting in the hospital with, when I, that doctor told me all the terrible things that could happen to me. Yeah. That night I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, I had, a, I had what you would call fear, but it was fear of the unknown. You know, I didn't know what was going to happen. But my thoughts were of Nancy and of my brother and of my friends, and of the church, and all the things that were, the, the, the responsibilities I had. I, I had to make, I was concerned that I had, hadn't taken care of all the details. So that when I was gone, things would be real long. So, anyway, all those things and so much more uh, come against us in this life, and we can have that peace. It's just, we're just settled. The storm is on the surface, the deep below the surface. Old Man River just keeps rolling along. And I'm part of that peaceful flow. The Hebrew word for peace is what? Shalom. 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 Jesus said this in John 14. He said, I'm leaving with you with a gift. 
I'm living you with a gift, a peace of mind and heart. Peace of mind and heart. My soul to peace. And the peace I give you isn't like the peace the world gives. And so don't be troubled or afraid, he says to us. So the Bible word shalom means complete, it means wholeness, it means soundness, solid, it means prepared, it means ready, it means full. All kinds of meaning to this biblical word peace. First Kings 6, 7 says this, the temple, when it was being built, when they were building the God's temple in Jerusalem, was built with stone finished at the quarry. You know what that word finished is? Shalom. It's finished at the quarry. As they dug it out of the ground, they looked at the plan for the temple, they knew where this particular stone was going to be, and they finished it to exact dimensions and exact size that it needed to be to fit where it was going. And then it goes on to say, the stone was finished at the quarry so that no hammer or chisel or any iron tool was heard in the temple while it was being built. Wow. Isn't that interesting? <clears throat> yeah. In other words, they didn't have to, like you see houses being built, they're sawing and they're hammering and they're banging and they're fit, trying to fit this and cutting this to fit and all of that. None of that. They just brought the stone in, boom, it fit right where it was supposed to go. Mm -hmm. No noise in the temple. There was peace in the temple. There was shalom in the temple because that stone was shalom at the quarry. Isn't that interesting? So in Christ, our life in Christ, God has shaped His plan for our lives. It's already shaped. We don't have to spend a lot of time hammering and chiseling and figuring it out and working on it to make it fit. God has already shaped it. And he says, I'm going to take you and I'm going to place you in the temple of God exactly the way I want you. Hallelujah. Every one of you here, if you're born again, God has shaped you and prepared you. He has given, he's given you shalom. He's, he, he shalomed you. <laughs> so that he will just place you. And you don't have to figure it out. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to do all this stuff to get ready. God says, I will prepare you. And I will set you in place. I think that's really good. Amen. No stress. I tell you what, I wish I could learn that. Like I was doing this week. What am I going to say? What music should we use? God says to me, Shalom. If you trust in me, you're ready. Yes, you have to study and prepare like the Bible says. But you know where to go. Isaiah 26 and verse 3 says, You, God, will keep in perfect peace. You know what perfect peace is? Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. <laughs> shalom, shalom. Perfect peace. All who trust in you will be kept in perfect peace. All whose thoughts are fixed on you. Shalom, shalom. My thoughts are fixed on God, and therefore... I have peace. If you get into turmoil and upset and you get fearful and angry or disturbed or whatever it is, what do you do? Fix your eyes on you God. fix your heart and your thoughts on God. I do it all the time. I have to do it a lot. I don't let it grab me. I say, okay, I understand. I'm being disturbed. I'm being knocked off balance. Lord, I'm going to fix my heart and my thoughts on you because you are stable. And this is not affecting you. Philippians 4, 6. Don't worry about anything. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's easy for you to say. That's easy for you to say, Paul. Don't worry about anything. Instead, instead pray about everything. You start worrying, what do you do? You start praying. Tell God what you need. Thank Him for all He's done. Then, you will experience God's peace. Whose peace? God's. God. It's His peace. Not my peace. It's His peace. I want His peace. I don't want mine. Amen. <laughs> I want His peace. And that exceeds anything we can understand. His peace, again, it's His peace, will guard 
And here's that phrase again, your hearts and minds, your whole soul, your whole being, as you live in Christ Jesus. His peace. Same words used by Jesus that we read in John 14. Hearts and minds. His peace. Not our heat, not our peace, not our peace, not the world's peace. His peace is shalom, shalom. Perfect peace. Shalom can also be translated lacking nothing. nothing. Possession of adequate resources. Debt free. Yeah. When we get shaken, discouraged, angry, upset about external stuff, we are not shalom. That's right. We are not complete. We need to recognize that. The upsets that come. If they begin to undermine undermine my peace, it's not coming from God. Some people can sit by a quiet stream in the country with the trees blowing in the wind, the birds chirping, the flowers growing, the brook rippling by, and they can be shaken, angry, upset, smoke one cigarette after another, guzzle a six-pack of beer, and complain that they're stressed out, tight, angry, and bored. And then some people can be in the midst of a city with the horns honking and the traffic going by and the kids yelling and the gangs running and the gunshots going off and live in shalom, shalom. Perfect peace. So it isn't our surroundings, is it? No. Not our surroundings that give us peace. It's God who gives us peace. No matter what is happening around us. If you've been in the military, you've probably heard this sign. If you can keep your head yep. while all those around you are losing theirs, right. you just don't understand the situation. <laughs> well, that's wrong, isn't it? Yes. That's not correct. I can, I can understand the situation and be at perfect peace. Amen. While everyone around me going crazy. We got that going on right now in our country, don't we? Everybody around us going crazy. Their political persuasion doesn't matter. They're all crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't want to cast that judgment, but it sure looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah. They're all it's running wild. Without a vision of God, the people run wild. Perish is the, is the wrong word. When, the, when there's no vision of God, the people run wild. That's what's happening in our country. That's what's happening in the whole world. They're losing their vision of God. That is the real foundation for all the trouble that we're in right now. Amen. So we have to recognize what it says in Ephesians 2.14 as believers. He himself is our peace. He is our peace. Hallelujah. Jesus was shalom, shalom in the Bible all the time, in the flesh. He was at rest. He was prepared. He, was, he had adequate resources, adequate spiritual resources. And, the, and physical resources. He was supplied with what he needed. He was complete in his relationship with the Father. He was shalom, shalom. He, he shows us. Here's some practical ideas, some examples from the Bible about him and the kind of peace he had. During a violent storm, he and his disciples were out on the lake and they were about to sink. And what was Jesus doing? Sleeping. He was sleeping. <laughs> Everybody else panicked. But Jesus had said, let's go to the other side. And the disciples should have said, okay, no matter what happens, we're going to get to the other side because he said so. Right? He faced 5,000 hungry people who needed to be fed. He wasn't disturbed. He just took care of it. Miraculously. All the experts told, told them that Jairus' daughter was dead. Jesus said, nah, she's just sleeping. Let's go see she ra he raised her from the dead. The demon-possessed man in the cemetery. He's a wild man. Dangerous. Running around, cutting himself, and screaming and yelling. Jesus said, out. Calmly. He brought peace to the man. They came to arrest Jesus. He surrendered peacefully. Jesus' trial was a joke. And yet he remained calm, gave no defense. On the cross, Jesus prayed, forgive them. Amen. The ones who nailed me to the cross, the ones who were standing there yelling at me, cursing me, mocking me, forgive them. 
Forgive him, Father. No matter what was happening in his life, he was at peace. And his peace didn't come from an absence of trouble. We can see that for sure, right? It came from the peace of the Father. The Father gave him his peace. And the world can give, the world can give us a kind of a peace. But it's temporary. It's always temporary. It's shallow. It's external. It's subject to change instantly. Here's what Jeremiah said about those who promote worldly peace. Jeremiah 8, 11. They, and he's speaking of the prophets and the priests, they say, peace, peace. They shalom, shalom. When there is no peace. Today, the Jews and the Palestinians say, shalom, shalom. Peace, peace. Cease fire. Well, guess what? Mm -hmm. There will be no peace among those people until Jesus comes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just won't happen. There will be times of slowdown in the fighting. But the fighting is always there under the surface. And that's the way most peace treaties are. Now, our flesh wants to change the circumstances. Psychology wants to modify our attitude and behavior and give us drugs. But God changes us from inside. He changes us in here. Peace comes from the inside, not from outside, not from circumstance. Uh, after they were done fixing all 14 holes in our walls after we pre-plumbed the house, there was turmoil, there was mess. After they put, to put our whole new drain field in, there was turmoil. You couldn't flush the toilet. You couldn't, couldn't use water. It just went on and on and on. It was turmoil, turmoil. But I knew it was going to be over someday. And it did disturb me. <laughs> right? But once everything was done and all the holes were patched and the painted walls were painted, I said, <sighs> I felt peace. But guess what? Temporary. It's coming along. Something else is coming. Temporary. Something else is coming. So that's not my source of peace, that the work is done. It's my source of peace is Him. Him in me. And I, I'm still learning how to deal, how to, how to tap into that. The inner peace of the Father. Colossians 1, verse 19. says, God in all His fullness was pleased to live in Christ. And through Him God reconciled everything to Himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. Every believer has peace. It's there. His peace has been given to us. Our problem is, like I said, tapping into it when we need it. Jesus' 12 disciples traveled with him for three years, didn't they? They were around a, guy, a miracle worker, great lessons, great, great doctrinal teaching, great grace message from God. And yet, here's some of the stuff they said. I wonder which one of us is going to be the greatest. Uh, well, that's a waste of valuable oil. When she poured the oil on Jesus. And then, then they're saying, well, what are we going to get out of this? Right? Or let's call down fire on those guys. They're not part of us. Mm -hmm. And then he said, they said, that person's casting out demons and he's not one of us. There's a lot of that in the church right now. They're doing that, but they're not, they're not as spiritual as we are. Right? And then, uh, Peter said, I'll go to death with you. And that was a message from the enemy. And then they asked, well, how many times do I have to forgive? Mm -hmm. How many times? They asked Jesus in the boat, don't you care if we drown in this storm? And then, of course, we can't feed this crowd. How can we ever feed this crowd? So there's, there's always a disturbance among them, even though they saw the miracles that Jesus did. They heard his teaching. But there's always a disturbance among them. They weren't at peace until... The day of Pentecost, yes. when the Holy Spirit came and brought peace, <coughs> brought the fruit of the Spirit into their lives. 
but the presence of the Holy Spirit. So, tranquilizers, mood modifiers won't do it because you can't buy peace. <laughs> Yoga and meditation, good deeds won't help because peace doesn't come from things we do, doesn't come from things we feel. Church membership, programs, activities in the church won't help either. Jesus said, this is a gift for those who receive me. This is a gift, your peace. And out of that peace, we do the things that God would have us do. But we do them with a quiet heart. Not with anxiety, not with pressure, not with commands and demands on us. We just do them. Total peace. After Pentecost, when Jesus' followers were filled with the Holy Spirit, they became fearless and bold. They didn't care what happened to them. Over and over, they whipped them and they beat them and said, don't talk about Jesus anymore. And they went out immediately and talked about Jesus. They didn't care. They were just simply at peace in their hearts, knowing they were doing what God called them to do. And they took all of them to the death, to probably some terrible deaths. Every believer today is filled with the same Holy Spirit. It's always a perfect peace. All through the Bible, reminded for Isaiah forty-one ten, fear not, for I am with you. Amen. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's a promise fulfilled in Christ. John sixteen thirty-three. Jesus said, "This these things I've spoken to you, that in me." You may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. You will have it. Guaranteed. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Lord, the world is coming against me. I'm distressed. I'm, I'm pressed down. Jesus says, I have overcome the world. And therefore, you have overcome the world. Because I am in you and you are in me. Let's do this together. Let's go through this together. Just hang on. And we connect with that peace through great, by grace through faith. He can't lie. God's not going to lie. God's not going to uh, fail on His promises. Can I share a pet peeve with you? How many of you have got pet peeves? They run around the house all the time. <laughs> got to feed them. Don't feed them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't feed those pet peeves. Too many believers think you've got to remind God of His promises when they pray. You've got to remind God of His promises. You don't have to remind Him of His promises. You simply trust in them. We have right? to remind us of our it's His promises. What's that? It's us we have to remind. Of it's his us we have to remind of His promises. Yeah, so be careful you don't think you have to remind God of His promises because He's good for them. We just have to remember them. Sure. And when we're in that mess, we simply say, Lord, I'm trusting you to be with me. I'm trusting you to be with me in a powerful way. Of course, He's always with us. That's another thing we say, Lord, be with Him. No, <laughs> well, He's always with you. But Lord, we need that awareness of your presence. That awareness. And, and trust in that presence with us. So we need to stop focusing on the trouble and we're on the problem, right? And focus on the problem solver. We become then peacemakers. We become reconcilers. We reconcile. We're ready to reconcile man with God and man with man. Those at war, whenever there's a war, they always try to threaten or imprison or kill the peacemakers. They don't want peacemakers. They like war. They like war. There's, people are assassinated who try to be peacemakers, like Martin Luther King. He was a peacemaker. They killed him because they didn't want peace. They wanted to maintain. You have to be careful today that we become targets of those who don't want peace. Our, there's a lot of people in our country who don't want peace. They don't want to solve the racial problem. They want to inflame it. Yeah, that's right. 
That's what's going on. Amen. You got to see it clearly. They don't want to solve our problem. They don't want to solve the border problem. They don't want to solve it. That's why they're ignoring it. I mean, it's just it just goes on and on. It's like it's crazy, yep. craziness. So we need to stay at peace and preach one thing: Christ and Him crucified. That's right. That's it. Amen. That's it. And uh, so, God's peace is eternal. Oneness with the Father. The Jesus and the Holy Spirit, the shalom, shalom. The bottom line is contentment. Another word for peace, contentment. We're not jealous, frustrated, or covetous, but we're content with who we are. We're content with what we have. We're content with what God has done and is doing in our life. Prayers become more for others and less for ourselves. Paul said in Philippians 4, he said, I have learned how to be content. He said, it didn't come naturally. I had to learn it. How many of you know, you got to learn it. We need to learn how to be at peace. We need to learn how to be content. We get to learn it. And we learn it how? Through the trouble we go through. <laughs> That's how we learn it. Man, I'm talking to me today. <laughs> so the fruit of the Spirit matures with contentment. It's part of the maturing process. And love encompasses it all. Then it gives us joy. Yes, He's with me. Yes, He is. Then comes that peace that, that, that keeps going. Have you ever seen an overwhelmed orange? <laughs> Have you ever seen a frustrated fig? Have you ever seen a pan panicky pineapple? No. Have you ever seen a fruit tree going, Oh, i gotta, got to produce this fruit. Oh, i got to produce this fruit. Ooh. I used to deliver auto parts, and I'd drive through the orchards. And I'd look at a lot of fruit trees, and not one of them was straining to produce. They were just producing. Because that's what they did. And that's us. We need to just produce. Allow the life of Christ to flow through us. And it will produce fruit. And it will produce the right fruit. Amen. Well, that's good. I'm going to keep that one. <laughs> so don't be a panic, panicky pineapple. I can't even say that. Panicky pineapple. Say that 20 times. <laughs> Matthew 11, 28. Jesus said this. Come to me. How many times do you think he said come to me? Come follow me. Lots of times. Lots of times. He said, I'm your source. I am your anchor. I am the one. Come to me, he said, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Shalom. I will give you peace. I will give you content. That, that, that's, there's a whole message in that passage right there. The whole message in that. And then in John 14, 27, we read this before, but let me say it again as we end this. He said, I am leaving you with a gift. Peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. So I hope you'll join with me in, in really seeking... God's presence in me to produce that peaceful life that He wants me to have. It's not going to be a trouble-free life. But it's going to be a life that will be peace in the midst of the storm. That's, one of, that's a great song, isn't it? Peace. He gives me peace in the midst of the storm. Amen. Yeah. Amen.